Hello guys, today is going to be a very raw and stripped back video. There's not going to be any crazy editing. I just want to talk about my story, mainly to spread awareness about this disorder because a lot of people have never heard of it before. And I'm really hoping that someone who's going through the same situation I went through a couple of years ago, desperately searching the internet to find out what I had, will come across this video if they have this and it can put their mind at ease and actually get them the treatment they need. So this is going to be about my story as a hypochondriac dealing with unexplained dizziness for about three years, um, struggling to get a diagnosis, tests were coming back fine, and I was literally at my wit's end. I was like, I literally can't live my life properly. I feel like I'm gonna pass out all the time or fall on the floor, what is going on? So I consider this to be an invisible disability. And I don't know if you guys know Has, but I've actually spoken about this in her video. She kindly featured me. And since then I've had about eight people message me saying they think they have PPPD, um, which is amazing because they were in the same situation I was in, no diagnosis, their lives have been taken over. So I'm so glad that I've given people some hope already just from that video. Um, and hopefully I can help more people too. So I'd say it's about a year ago now since I actually got diagnosed or maybe a little bit longer, but I have PPPD. This is an abbreviation for persistent postural perceptual dizziness absolute mouthful so that's why we just say pppd um <laughs> i did look online to see if it has any alternative names and it does um there's phobic postural vertigo space motion discomfort and visual vertigo and chronic subjective dizziness so all of them are referring to the same condition and um, this was defined in 2015 so i say it's relatively new and i think that's why a lot of doctors don't immediately suggest that it is that and why it takes people so long to get diagnosed because by the people i've spoken to for everyone it's been at least i think two years that they've been dealing with this before they got diagnosed so this is part of the reason why I want to raise awareness so people aren't waiting years to get diagnosed because I don't want anyone to go through what I went through it's horrible especially as a hypochondriac so PPPD is not dangerous although you can feel like you're dying and that's not an exaggeration the symptoms especially when they flare up can be unbearable and it just makes you think that something is seriously wrong and the doctors have missed something massive but it is actually linked with anxiety so so PPPD is something in the brain it's nothing dangerous at all it's just to do with the signals obviously the brain receives so many signals per second from loads of different places some of them conflict with each other and in a normal person these signals and processes are just kind of something you don't have to think about they don't affect you you can carry on you can be turning your head walking makes no difference all this is kind of happening in the background but for someone that has PPPD these signals aren't really filtered out and you feel the kind of conflicting signals and as a result you have to focus on how to balance it's not something that's just naturally learnt you are fully aware about your balance and this is why one of the most common symptoms is feeling like you're going to fall um, and people start to struggle with their walking. This in turn creates a really horrible cycle with anxiety because your brain then thinks, oh my God, it's high risk, you're at fear of falling. Then as a result, it tells your body to panic and then you start feeling anxious. Your body might seize up and feel quite stiff. You may struggle with your walking a bit more and your legs might feel a bit like jelly because now your brain is basically in high risk mode when it doesn't need to be, but just because of the whole process and how you reacted naturally, your brain now thinks it needs to protect you. The way that PPPD starts is something that interests me because anyone is capable of getting PPPD but it's more common in people over 30. So it's basically triggered by an initial event that causes you to feel anxious or dizzy or whatever. So that could be a vestibular migraine. For me, I think it was a panic attack because I remember I had my first ever one and after that, that is when my symptoms started and they just kept coming and going and it made me more anxious, had more panic attacks and it just was a horrible cycle. It can also be triggered from like ear infections because that is related to balance because the ears, the balance organ just anything that's kind of made you feel a bit off and dizzy and then it starts to manifest and then the dizziness becomes more and more consistent. In terms of the main symptoms of PPPD that are general, um, it is a fear of falling, it's kind of a lightheadedness. This one's more to do with movement though, it's not like vertigo where the room's spinning or anything, you feel like you're moving. So you could be sat on the bed and it feels like it's swaying, like you're on a boat or something when you're not. You can also have mild dissociation, which is a common symptom in anxiety sufferers as well. It's absolutely terrifying. So you can feel like you're floating in a dream, just really spaced out. And I've noticed one of the big things when I dissociate is if I look down at my hands, I'm so aware that I'm in my own body and it just feels really weird looking at my hands and it's a bit of a scary experience obviously with the lightheadedness you feel like you're going to pass out but I never did and I think a lot of people don't it's just the feeling like you're going to but your body is fine it's not going to pass out but obviously when you feel like you're going to pass out your reaction is to panic believe it or not it can actually be worse when you're sat down because you can feel movement more Another prominent symptom that I forgot to mention was that my vision was really dodgy, like everything was clear but at the same time it was quite foggy. Kind of like if you look at a bright light and then blink and you've kind of got the annoying reflection in your eyes, I felt like that and my eyes would really struggle to focus on things. 
believe it or not, it can actually be worse when you're sat down because you can feel movement more. When I came across PPPD, the specific symptom is the one that made me think, oh my God, I actually have this because it was so specific. So it said places like supermarkets, busy places, also claustrophobic places, open spaces with a lot of kind of open clear floor i can't stand that like the train station was an issue for me because there's just so much room to fall transport so trains you kind of panic when you're on there because you feel trapped and you're like what if i pass out i just don't feel well i want to get off that happened with me a lot so i kind of had to stop traveling to see my partner because it was just too much to me it was overwhelming i kept overheating and it was just a shambles. <laughs> Seeing movement can really throw your brain off and then you feel like you're moving, then you feel really unsteady because you are just sat or stood still and it's really confusing, really horrible. And yeah, I just don't wish it on anyone. And then you tend to find, because it's so hard to distract yourself from the feelings, the more you focus on them, the more you think you're gonna pass out and the symptoms start to get worse because anxiety is coming into it then and it just feels like this horrible vicious cycle that you can't get out of and it's really hard to kind of relax and stay calm. Luckily though, when I got diagnosed with it, they did have quite a few options actually um, to deal with this. Sometimes you can have PPPD for the whole of your life, but the symptoms are the main thing that are the problem, not the actual PPPD, if that makes sense. Um, so once you can get your symptoms under control, you can live a relatively normal life again and get your life back because for me, it affected my life a lot. I had to quit work because I worked at Debenhams and being on my feet all the time, I just couldn't. Like I felt like I was gonna pass out quite a few times and I was just so unsteady on my feet. It was dreadful. I also went through uni with this. So as you can imagine, I missed quite a few lectures. Not loads though, considering how ill I felt, but I just, I genuinely struggled to walk. Some days I couldn't get out of bed. It was that bad. It would flare up really, really badly to where I was holding onto the sides, struggling to get to the toilet. And when you have no diagnosis and you're a hypochondriac and that's happening, Obviously you are like, what the hell is going on? This is actually terrifying. There's something wrong with my head. And it's really horrible as well because this is why I think it's an invisible disability because although my friends were supportive and they tried to understand, I don't think they ever fully could. And because I never actually looked ill and I was still trying to be my bubbly self because I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I think a lot of the times if I said I couldn't go to plans or lectures or whatever, they'd kind of be like, oh, she's canceling again. But it's like, I wish I could show you how it feels in my head because I bet you a million percent you would not go to the plans either. And then it starts to mix with the anxiety and you start to feel too scared to go to plans because you're like, what if it flares up? What am I meant to do? What if I pass out in front of my friends? I'm someone who doesn't like to rely on people and, and I don't like to be vulnerable around people. So I would never ever tell them, oh, can I link your arm? When really I just should have because I needed that extra support and I just struggle in silence instead and end up not going to things. Even though I know if I would have told them I needed help and support walking, they a million percent would have given me that. Um, but also like nights out became a lot harder. Alcohol was really weird because obviously alcohol makes you feel dizzy. But in some ways for me, like sometimes I'd drink it when I was dizzy and it would just be too much. And I'd be like, no, I feel even worse. And other times it would kind of mask that dizziness and just make me feel drunk in general, if that makes sense. So sometimes it made it more bearable being drunk and in a kind of nightclub environment. But at the same time, sometimes it would make it worse. Dizziness and dizziness together, I don't know. <laughs> So let's talk about treatments now, because if you think you have this, it's absolutely amazing that you found this video. There are quite a few options, but I do recommend the thing I went with the most because it actually tackles the root cause. Um, and then if you feel like you need meds, you can do that as a last resort, but try this first. So vestibular therapy or vestibular rehabilitation is basically exercises that help you retrain your brain, your signals, and learn to balance again. It literally is like people that go through physiotherapy and stuff, like they've been in an accident, they're learning to walk again but this is like in your mind, a condition in the mind. Um, you have to learn how to walk properly again, how to balance, how to feel stable. And these exercises are actually really easy to do. Um, I will link them below, I'll put a source, um, because it's got a lot of different ones in there, but most of them are to do with movement of your head. So I used to do one where I'd have a little cross on the wall, stand a few meters away from the cross, and then I would try and keep my vision on the cross while moving my head like this. And then I'd also have some where I just, the ones that I'm doing now, um, still, where I look left to right. And you kind of just stand still and focus on moving your head. One of the things for people that have PPPD is they have very stiff necks because we don't want to move our head much because it makes everything go really disorientated. So stiff neck, you kind of need to make sure you keep moving it. And these exercises make sure that you do. So it's really good. Another thing which I found so, so tricky, but so helpful was putting myself in these environments that prompted the anxiety and the dizziness. So going to a supermarket, going to like busy shops, going to train stations, stuff like that and having to kind of force myself to not panic. Do this first with someone around you, someone that you trust, so your friend, your partner, your parents, whoever, and just have them there, but don't 
hold on to them unless you need to hold on to them and just kind of embrace the feelings and remind yourself you're not going to pass out have you passed out at all no so just because you feel faint you won't faint so the more you focus on feeling faint the worse it gets so really you just need to distract yourself try and focus on something else which can be very hard it's a lot easier said than done when you've got this massive foggy dizzy head blurred vision everything going on um so it is very difficult but the more you do it and the more you get comfortable you feel you can avoid these places less and you'll find yourself getting better along with the exercises you can have medications so like depression and anxiety tablets ssris but i would suggest this is the last resort because i feel like there are side effects and complications with using antidepressants and i feel like these exercises have worked so well that it's better to try that first and then maybe go with that afterwards if it's not working for you i know that anxiety meds would work well for me because i do have anxiety but i just use cbd instead um just want to plug my 15 percent off discount code from nature can they have some amazing options edibles as well um and that really puts my anxiety at ease on days where i know i'm going to be anxious or i've got social plans or just have a few drops throughout the day and it just kind of puts me at ease instead of having to rely on tablets also, you can have CBT, so a psychological intervention. They train your mind mentally instead of the physical exercises um, to face your fears, stop being anxious, stop associating certain places and social events with feeling ill. And I'm guessing that would work quite effectively too. But definitely the vestibular exercises have been so, so helpful for me. And my dizziness is now at like... At one point it felt like it fully went. Now I'd say it's at about 10% just because of lockdown and not going out as much when I do. I'm not used to the environment so much. So I have picked up my exercise again because I stopped them for about six months once I realized I felt fine. But you may feel that some periods of your life you need to bring the exercises back. But the best thing is it's not at 100% anymore, it's at 10. So I feel like it's not interfering with my life anymore. It's just something that some days it's not the best. It can flare up a little bit. And most of the time it's absolutely fine and I feel normal and I'm not focusing on anything up here which is massive progress so so if you feel how i did a few years ago and you think you have this there is most definitely a light at the end of the tunnel you can get your life back your social life feel positive feel confident going out by yourself you will get there and i really hope that people have come across this video that may have this condition because it would be the most rewarding thing knowing that i've helped people out who are going through the same thing as me. So yeah, guys, hopefully that gives you a really good overview of PPPD and it will raise awareness on the condition. I reckon there's a lot of people that go undiagnosed because they don't come across this. I will leave some sources below if you want to learn more about PPPD. Um, any questions, drop them below or message me on my Instagram, which is here. And I will see you guys in the next video if you subscribed. Bye, guys.